Now Washington read the dispatches from Bunker Hill and he thought what he had heard was true. The New Englanders were, as John Adams told him, fierce as lions, ready to brave any danger. This was the making of a great army and all Washington wanted to do was come to Boston or come to Cambridge and get these men ready for another attack like this. Let the British have another victory like Bunker Hill. The British public would withdraw its support from this war effort and force them to give up the war. That was Washington's hope, to have another battle like that. Draw the British out of Boston. He arrived here on the 5th of July of 1775 and discovers the army isn't what John Adams had said it was. Fierce as lions, ready to brave any danger. These New Englanders, he never quite reconciled himself to them. First, they were really dirty. They didn't bathe very often, and they didn't have any order. Worse, they didn't know how to dig latrines. You have 20,000 men living in these camps between Cambridge and Roxbury, relieving themselves wherever they felt like it, which is actually a disaster, going to be a disaster for an army, if you think about it. I see you're shocked at this very idea. They're, they don't listen to orders either. Washington can never find out exactly how many men he has under his command. The first thing he does is send out an order, tell me how many men you have. And, well, you would think these guys work for the Registry of Motor Vehicles. <laughs> well, no, we don't actually have that report yet. We're not quite sure. And, and now Washington as the, is supposed to be paying all of these guys because this is now the Continental Army. And there is another big problem here. All militia troops are paid by the month. And before they became the Continental Army, it was the responsibility of Massachusetts to pay the Massachusetts troops, Connecticut to pay the Connecticut troops, Rhode Island to pay the Rhode Island troops, New Hampshire to pay the New Hampshire troops. But now it's the responsibility of Washington and the Congress to pay all of them as the Continental Army. Well, you know what? Massachusetts troops are paid by the lunar month, not the calendar month. So if there happen to be two full moons this month, we get paid twice. We get paid when the moon is full. Now, if it happens to be a full moon and we get paid and the guys from Connecticut don't, they go complain to Washington about why, how come those guys are getting paid and we are not? This is uh, a difficult thing. Also, in Connecticut, the regiments had 1,100 men. Massachusetts, they had 900, 1,000, so if you want to transfer men, very difficult to do. These are difficulties Washington finds here. He does find some officers he likes and some reason for hope here. Actually, one thing he finds that's really troubling, they miscounted the amount of gunpowder on hand. When he arrived, they said, we have 300 barrels. A week later, they say, you know what? We forgot to deduct how much we used Bunker Hill. Um, each man has enough for about nine rounds. And it's at that moment that Washington had everyone leave the room and then you would be surprised at the language Washington actually knew and could use when he was provoked. <laughs> Two officers impress Washington. On his way to inspect the fortifications in Roxbury, he met Henry Knox, a bookseller from Boston. Not actually in the army at the time, but he had built fortifications at Fort Hill and Roxbury, impressive fortifications. This is someone who knows how to build fortifications, who knows military science. And Washington made Knox the, he had co Congress commissioned Knox a colonel in charge of artillery. It's kind of a good news, bad news thing. Good news is you're the colonel in charge of artillery. The bad news is the artillery is at Fort Ticonderoga and you have to go get it. And the off other was Nathaniel Green of Rhode Island and Green with his Rhode Island troops was in Roxbury and what impressed Washington about Green was his men had dug latrines. <laughs> he has Green and the Rhode Island group brought over to uh, Prospect Hill and actually by 17, in 1783 there will only be three officers still in the army who were in service in 1775, Washington, Knox, and Green. And Knox does go off to Fort Ticonderoga and brings back the artillery by oxen, oxen drag this artillery, 90 pieces of artillery across Massachusetts and in early March it's put on the top of Dorchester Heights in what is now South Boston. 
And what Washington expects to happen now is the British will come out and attack. And when they do that, we will move into Boston and attack them. That was the plan. And the British do, in fact, come out to attack. But a big storm blows up, and they're unable to take the heights. And General Howe realizes his only recourse is to leave. Howe and the other British officers understood that Boston was untenable as a place from which to win back the loyalty of Americans, but also understood having brought this big army over, if they failed to hold Boston, that would be a disaster for British, in British public opinion. But Washington and the artillery give not Howe no choice but to leave. And on the 17th of March, 1776, the British Army withdraws from Boston. This is the first American victory in the war for independence. In fact, and independence would be declared three months later. It was uncertain whether it could be won. But having forced the British out of Boston, Washington and this group of militia troops, which he begins forging into a continental army, make it inevitable that the Americans would be able to win independence and sustain it. That's all I had to say. Thank you. <laughs> did, did you want questions? Over libations, I will be happy to answer questions, so thank you. <laughs>